my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. Today we are covering Twitter philanthropy, AKA giving away money on Twitter. First of all though, I wanna say thank you guys so much for 400,000 subscribers. Also, I wanna remind you, it is final season. I am ending my junior year of university but I'm busy and I'll probably have some late uploads, but I'm here now, that's all that matters. Also, late happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. You know, this time of year is just all about giving and buying and money. And those are all very relevant to today's topic. Let's jump in. The other day I came across a tweet. I'm going to give away $30,000 to one random person who retweets this tweet and follows Twitter philanthropist at Pulte and me. If you don't follow us, we can't DM you the money. We'll show proof. Partnering with him just makes sense because he also likes helping people. And I was shook because a few people that I follow on Twitter retweeted this, hence why it came across my timeline. And I was just like, really guys? But I get that this is literally free. It costs nothing to enter. It takes a minute of your time, but it's just not worth it for me. This very tweet caused me to spiral into an obsessive research hole, as every internet analysis video does. I had so many questions. Where does this money come from? Is anyone actually gonna receive this money? Is it legit? Why? But really my first question was, aren't giveaways just a way to buy followers? Nothing engages people more than the opportunity to win something. As both Mr. Beast and Pulte said, you must be following so I can message you. Ah, yes, this is not a ploy to buy followers. It's just practical. But I know this is typical of any social media giveaway. You must be a subscriber. You must be a follower. I get that if you're a creator and you wanna give back to your audience, it makes sense that obviously you'd want someone who is a subscriber to win. But of course, giveaways do attract new followers as well. So in this situation, I wanted to calculate the cost per new follower. You know, these guys are throwing down money. What are they gaining from it exactly? If you saw my credit card debt payoff video, you may have noticed that I fucked up a simple division problem. What can I say other than I haven't had a math class in years, and yes, I have forgotten how to do basic calculations, what? So please trust me now to probably get this wrong Possibly. Okay, so two guys giving away $30,000. I'm going to assume that they're each pitching in 15,000. How many followers did each of them gain? The tweet got over 700,000 retweets, but I know that those aren't all new followers for Mr. Beast. So I went to Social Blade to try to see how many followers each of them gained on that day and the day after. This was a big time for Pulte. He gained probably 600,000 followers and this made him pass a million. Mr. Beast gained about 300,000, but he had already had about 4 million before. So what was the cost per follower? 15,000 divided by 600,000 is about two cents per follower for Pulte. 15,000 divided by 300,000 is about five cents per follower for Mr. Beast. So if your goal is basically to buy followers, why not literally just buy followers? It would only cost a few thousand dollars to buy half a million Twitter followers. Some people just want the appearance, the illusion of a higher follower count, so they wouldn't care whether those accounts are real or fake as long as they look like they have followers. But real, engaged followers are obviously worth much more than fake followers. So that is why giveaways are a great way to attract new followers that are real people. Whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever platform, the value of new followers is most likely greater than the value of whatever is being given away. So giveaways can be a clever way to make a creator look really generous when really they are benefiting too. But then again, entering a giveaway costs nothing but a moment of your time. So I guess it's a win-win. Anyway, we're gonna get much deeper into this, but clearly I am starting off on a skeptical and pessimistic foot. And some people watching this may be thinking, how dare you question Twitter philanthropy? These people are doing charity. They are giving away their own hard earned money. You're doing nothing, you broke idiot. And to that I say, true. But the truth is, I like to be critical, okay? It is the basis of this entire series. I think it is rather boring to look at something as simple, uncomplicated, 100% good or bad. I like nuance, baby. One person on Twitter once said that my videos are deep dives into shallow topics, and honestly, I live for that. 
So I am going to continue being hypercritical and picking little things apart for the fun. Okay, let's start with Mr. Beast. I had only been familiar with Mr. Beast by name because of hashtag team trees, but I had never seen his videos. And honestly, <laughs> when I looked at his channel for the first time, it overwhelmed me. I'm someone who is like personally offended by extreme waste or unnecessary spending. So I was triggered. Mr. Beast's whole channel is built on gimmicks. Like in the beginning, he went viral for doing videos like microwaving a microwave, microwaving a toaster. He also had a nearly 24 hour long upload of him just counting to 100,000. He's clearly willing to do any ridiculous wild thing to get attention, but hey, he does put in the time. So then once he started to get like millions of views on every upload, he started a new genre on his channel, giving away money to strangers. And I'm being 100% genuine when I say, it is nice that he does this. It is nice that he gives money away to people. I'm sure that some of those people who have received that money have really, really needed it. So that's nice. Again, it's gimmicky, but okay. I'm a YouTuber. I'm going around giving random people who need a thousand dollars, so. However, in general, I am really not a fan of people making videos of their charity, their good acts. Most people get mad and say this is a bad way to get views. Tell them, like, you're okay with this. Are, are oh, you yeah. okay with it? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, best, YouTube. Best day of my life right yeah. here. Homeless people don't care if I use them for views. <laughs> it is so cringy to me, and I do think it is exploitative. I find it so uncomfortable that they're putting these people on camera as homeless man. The thing is though, in his videos, it does not seem like he's trying to make himself seem like a good person. He admits that he's doing it at least partially just for the views. But anyway, yeah, in the last two years, basically, Mr. Beast has been following a pattern. He gives away a bunch of money. That video goes viral, earning him more money. And then he gives away more money. What a winning formula. I mean, clearly it has been very, very successful. In this video, for example, he gave his mom a hundred thousand dollars. So I wanted to give you a check to help you pay for it. No. Yeah. Yes. This is thumbnail. good. Good YouTube. Yes, we need a thumbnail. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't take it. I swear, I cannot take it. Well, you're going to take it. But if I don't give it to you, I don't have a viral video. So you're using me for views. Yes. But you get money too, so we're both happy. So you use me for views and I get to pay off my mortgage? Mm -hmm. I think it works out pretty well. Jimmy, AKA Mr. Beast, says that he just sees it as reinvesting the money he earns on his channel back into his videos. Plus the sponsors do cover part of the cost for these giveaways. So thank you, Quid, for helping me. Obviously they didn't provide all $100,000, but thank you for what portion of this you did provide. Thank you, everybody, please download Quid. So there are a lot of videos on this website that I would consider to be money spending content. And I am fascinated by it. I have a lot to say about it. So I am going to talk more about Mr. Beast and other creators who are throwing cash in a next video. So stay tuned. As always, that's a topic for another video. Anyway though, from what I've seen, the people who do get money or win money from Mr. Beast do actually receive it. So at least it's legit. For example, this was the winner of that $30,000 tweet. So, oh my goodness. I found out I won and I basically went, what? So let's go back to Twitter now. Mr. Beast's bio is human ATM. Love that, he knows his brand. Most of his tweets are just promoting his videos. Sometimes he'll retweet or share other giveaways. But now we've got to focus on Bill Pulte, the self-proclaimed philanthropist and inventor of Twitter philanthropy. On his Instagram, it's philanthropist and inventor of Instagram philanthropy. Though I am not convinced that he is the first person to have ever given money away on either of those platforms. Bill Pulte went kind of viral this summer. Meet the 31 year old Twitter philanthropist giving away money to strangers online. For example, a woman who had recently been released from prison, she was trying to get back on her feet. She had been entering these Twitter lotteries and she ended up winning $10,000 dollars from Pulte. He summarizes his mission as basically using social media for good. So his tweets are all basically giveaways, teasing upcoming giveaways, or talking about how good it feels to give away money. If Donald Trump retweets this, I will give $30,000 to a veteran on Twitter. That's nice, but what if the president doesn't play into your Twitter game? No $30,000 to a vet in need? Thankfully, Trump is always on Twitter and he did retweet. 
Thank you, Bill. And honestly, this is classic Pulte. He is so selfless. This is not himself or his image. Getting public acknowledgement from the president on Twitter was just a benefit of this and also a requirement for the charity. I just realized he's actually done this multiple times. He also asked Kim Kardashian, Ben Shapiro, and AOC. According to these tweets, a retweet from AOC is worth $20,000 and Ben Shapiro is only worth $5,000. Let's read more of his tweets. I have a draft tweet in my Twitter for a $50,000 giveaway. Tweet it then. I found it hilarious that this tweet has 30,000 retweets. Like, why did anyone retweet that? This is not a giveaway. <laughs> Maybe people just retweet as fast as they can anytime they see a dollar sign. He also shared this gem. Star, my wife. What did you do today? Star, me. Raised money for a boy with autism and gave away money. Star, my wife. That's amazing. My dude's trying to get into the Twitter format. He's not getting it yet, but he's trying. He's also been sharing some dank memes. Nobody. Me. I think this is the only time I haven't enjoyed a SpongeBob reference. Anyway though, the basis of Bill's Twitter philanthropy is giving away money to the people who are most in need. And that's why he does entirely random giveaways based on retweets, gives away essentials like Teslas, and even the Tesla truck. Bill sometimes shares these fundraisers of people who need money for medical reasons or their vets and they're struggling, any, any number of things, you know, legitimate need. But then he's doing his $25,000 random Twitter giveaways and I'm just like, why don't you use that money and give it to the people who you say need it the most? My theory is that the random Twitter giveaways help build up the hype, you know, build up the follower count and then the campaigns that actually help people in need specifically are, you know, good for attracting positive press. So I started to read the responses to Pulte's tweets and it's honestly really, really sad. It's basically a lot of desperate people who are begging for help on Twitter. And of course we don't know whether their stories are legitimate or not, but I am sure that a lot of them are genuinely struggling and could use even a hundred dollars to help them get through the day or the week. But I found it funny cause like he'll tweet some of his cheesy shit and then people will reply say something like, happy Thanksgiving Bill, thank you so much for the work that you do. And then they'll end their response with their cash app username. Can you imagine if every time you posted something online and people interacted with you, they ended it with money please? Another interesting thing I discovered is that many of these people are basically professional full-time Twitter giveaway enterers. Their entire timelines are giveaways. And I get that like really Twitter is pointless. So I guess, yeah, why not shoot your shot, try to win some random coin or get somebody to cash app you. But this is one of my big points, okay? And this is where I'm gonna get really salty, really mad, okay? There are some people who are really, really opposed to welfare or having big government, you know? But those people are in favor of charity. And of course, charity is good, but I would prefer that we have a more generous social safety net so that people don't have to rely on random kindness of strangers and retweeting giveaways on Twitter in hopes that they will survive a hardship or an emergency or chronic poverty. Charity is good, but that shouldn't be the only thing that we rely on. Clearly charity is not enough to address all of these issues because so many people are hurting, so many people need help, and only one person is gonna win that $30,000 or that fucking Tesla truck, which is so useless. The truck, the money's great. These are the same type of people who say, this is not a handout. They demonize handouts. This is a hand up. I just hate that, it grinds my gears. It makes me so angry when people demonize welfare. They think that it's so disgraceful, embarrassing to apply for welfare or food stamps. Yet some of these very same people are spending all day begging for money on Twitter. For the record, nobody should be ashamed for either of these things. If you need help, ask for it. But is begging for charity on Twitter more efficient or effective than welfare or free healthcare? or better social security payments for people who are disabled or elderly? No, not at all. Another thing that gets me heated is when we are fed these feel good stories, 
such as six-year-old boy with lemonade stand raises $10,000 for his dad's cancer treatments. Wow, that is amazing. That is heartwarming. But actually, no, this is a tragedy. The fact that a child has to try to raise money in hopes that he can cover his dad's life-saving treatment, that is a tragedy. That's a symptom that our system is not working. We shouldn't have to rely on GoFundMe or the random generosity of strangers to survive cancer. We need Medicare for all, y'all. Okay, <laughs> I'm done being heated for a moment, all right? There's more later, but we'll see. Anyway, back to Pulte. Where is all this money coming from? Who is this mysterious guy giving away cash? First of all, Pulte comes from a family that is worth... I don't know how much his family is worth exactly, but his grandfather was a billionaire, and the family business is worth billions as well. So that helps. But he's not giving away his inheritance. This is money that he earned. He runs an investment firm called Pulte Capital. Yes, he was born into a family of billionaires, but he is self-made, okay? Pulte Capital's acquisitions will be funded in large part by money from the Pulte family. We love a humble success story. By the way, I just saw Knives Out this weekend. Great movie, you should watch it. But that reminds me of that because it's like, haha, I'm self-made, but I used a loan from my very wealthy family to get started, so am I really self-made? Good question. Am I salty that I didn't get born into a family of billionaires? Maybe. Either way, he is a dude with a lot of money and he's giving it away. Except it's not just his money. He's actually crowdfunding for donations. All over his Twitter, he encourages people to become part of hashtag Team Pulte. He collects donations from people on his team because he says that more people can do more good than just him. Okay. One example figure said that he had given away over $100,000 of his own money and over $200,000 of crowdfunded money. So I haven't been able to find any newer stats on this, but I kind of assume that the ratio is similar. So again, a big part of his mission is to make social media a better place and encourage other people to donate and get involved and be charitable, be a philanthropist. But if you're gonna encourage people to donate, why not just encourage people to donate directly to GoFundMes or directly to charities? I just don't understand why you'd be like, hey everybody, let's donate to me and my organization and then I will decide where this money goes. Just like, what's the point? Teamwork? Seems to me like people give him the money and he gets all the credit and lots of good press. On that note, let's talk a little bit about corporate philanthropy. You know when you see a massive corporation be like, we donated a hundred million dollars to this cause. Of course, again, charity is cool. <laughs> Thanks for that. But what about maybe taking care of your employees all year round? Instead of exploiting your workers with low wages and bad working conditions, what about like paying them a living wage? You might not be able to donate as much, but like you'll support the people who support your company. I don't know, I'm all about labor rights, you know? <sighs> Just a little quirk of mine. Again though, we wouldn't need so much random charity if we had more stable institutions, if we had better wages, free healthcare, affordable housing, if we actually provided veterans with the benefits that they have been promised. That's what I'm in favor of. It's funny because Pulte himself had a tweet, something like he wants to make sure every man, woman, and child has food and a place to sleep. And I was like, hell yeah, let's work on that safety net then. I don't think there are any charities that can possibly provide that to every man, woman, and child. But I think that uh, on an institutional national level, we might be able to work on that. Just saying. I'm smiling way too much in this video. It's creepy. Anyway, back to Team Pulte. Okay, Bill, you have convinced me. I wanna join the team, I wanna donate. Where do I sign up? It's not very clear from his Twitter. There is no link in bio, there's no website. Sometimes his tweets point to the sweepstakes rules that are at pulte.org slash r, but that website doesn't have any other information other than that. What is this actual organization? How can I donate? How can I learn more? It's actually kind of hard to find the website. It's called Team Pulte, so I tried Team Pulte and that's not it. It's actually at billpulte.org. And the website is really lacking information. You know, I would expect to maybe see some stories of people that Team Pulte has helped, how much money has been raised, how much is given to each cause. That's why I like how GoFundMe campaigns are organized because the page gives you the whole story. It gives you the who, what, where, when, why. You can see exactly how much money has been raised, whether they're below or above the targeted amount. That's good information to know when you're 
choosing what to donate to. So let's walk through the navigation of this website and see what we can learn. All it takes to join the team is follow Pulte on Twitter. Okay. Do you need to apply for a grant? You just fill out this type form with your name and your email and why you deserve the grant. Okay, mm seems like I just signed up for a mailing list. Pulte also works with teachers. Uh, so if you wanna apply for the teacher's grant, same thing, just fill out that form. Hope that they maybe contact you. Pulte's veterans, of course, we like to support the vets. Learn more, links back to Pulte's Twitter. This team is making major headlines, read the news. Links to Bill Pulte Google search. I just, I'm like, okay, first of all, this web design is terrible. You're not giving any information. People don't wanna do their own research. You're supposed to put it on the website, not just link to Google. But still, I'm trying to join the team. I'm trying to donate. How can I donate? Why is this so difficult? On teampulte slash billpulte.org, there is no place to donate. However, on Bill's Twitter and on the Team Pulte Twitter, they often share campaigns from a group called Team Giving. So if you go to the Team Giving website, it says that it is inspired by Pulte, but doesn't directly say if he is associated with it, and they share their whole board of directors and all of that, and Pulte is not on it, so I found that interesting. But that website does very clearly collect donations. And again, the Team Pulte Twitter and Bill's Twitter share those campaigns. So it seems like it's associated very directly. But again, who knows? It's not clear. Bill, if you're trying to make this movement bigger than you, if you're trying to collect the maximum amount of donations to fund these campaigns, make it easier. Fix your web design. Why is this so confusing? So it appears that Team Giving actually funds these campaigns using the crowdfunded donations. But who is funding those random Twitter giveaways? I would assume that that is Bill, you know, coming from his own millionaire fortune, self-made baby. But this is where the cash app theory comes in. This is something very interesting that I have learned about, I wasn't aware of. So cash app, I guess, is owned by Square, which is owned by Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey. Cash app has apparently given money to celebrities like Lil B for them to give away to their Twitter followers to get people to download the cash app. So now my question is, because Bill always uses Cash App to give money away, and that's kind of interesting, like, I don't know if it's even the most popular cash app, like there's Venmo, there's PayPal, you could just send checks, I guess. Why is he using the Cash App? Maybe Cash App is giving Bill money to give away. If so, I feel like that needs to be disclosed. It's not necessarily like a sponsorship or an ad, but I feel like that relationship needs to be noted actually just found a tweet from Bill. Why have we used Square's Cash App or PayPal? I guess he does use PayPal occasionally. Okay, why not checks? Easy. No, that's the answer. They're easily accessible to Americans already online. I'm not an investor in either. Not everyone has a bank account, and when I give away my money, I want everyone on Twitter to have a shot. That's another thing about this entire Twitter philanthropy thing is you have to note the privilege of having access to the internet. Like, yes, in theory, you could use a library computer, blah, 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 but that's obviously not the easiest thing to do if you're in a situation where you're struggling, you're in poverty, you're in need. So it's kind of interesting that this automatically can't necessarily reach the people who really are in the most need because they're probably not sitting on Twitter all day, able to retweet all of these things and keep up with these giveaways and download the Cash App. Like you'd need a smartphone for that, right? Come on. Bill should be following Mr. Beastly and might as well just go give Cash Out to people on the street. Whew, I'm getting heated. Also, yesterday, as I was writing this video, it was Black Friday, and Cash App was running a Black Friday sweepstake. They were giving away money. It's very interesting. I mean, I get why people would participate in this. If Cash App or any other celebrity or frickin' Bill are gonna be giving away money, why not play? Why not join the sweepstakes? To end this video, there is now a whole league of Twitter philanthropists claiming that they have money to give away to random people. There are lots of copycats and some people even claim to be Bill himself. So you drop your Cash App username, somebody Cash Apps you requesting $20 saying they're Bill. If you send me $20, I'll give you your $500 that you won. Clearly a scam, but some people fall for it. Not everyone is familiar with these scams that some of us see as very recognizable. If someone ever says that you need to pay them or buy something in order to win something, that's not legitimate. Don't do it, don't send them any money, don't do anything. It's a scam. This is also why you probably shouldn't blast your Cash App or your PayPal all over Twitter. 
At least figures like Pulte and Mr. Beast seem legitimate, but maybe that's just the blue check marks talking. So that's it. What do you guys think about Twitter philanthropy? Please let me know. Uh, if I was a little too harsh in this video, I apologize, but also not really. I mean, it's just my, my thoughts, my opinion, my perspective. Let's all share what we think. Is Twitter philanthropy just a way to exploit people in poverty? Is it just a way to make yourself look really good in giving? I don't know, but I encourage you guys to register to vote. Smoky Glow here on YouTube always ends her videos telling people to register, and I think that's great. So if you want to make these changes, institutional changes, you know, to help alleviate poverty and provide affordable housing for people and health care for all. Make sure that you register to vote and participate in all elections because those things are really going to make a difference for a lot of people's lives. And that way people can stop relying on Twitter lotteries. So you guys can follow me on Instagram for some mediocre pics. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, I have a draft tweet in my Twitter for a $50,000 giveaway. So I also have a vlog channel where I post other types of videos. I also have a podcast called Previously Gifted. You can watch it on YouTube or you can listen to it on any podcast app or Spotify. Extra content. My voice hurts. I'm done talking. Ow. I'm crying. It's good to end the video with tears in your eyes. It was just an emotional one, okay? All right, that's all. Okay, thanks. Bye.